you've probably heard a lot about mini PCNL. It's been around for a while, and I think it's getting better. So I added that maybe in parentheses because I think there may be some value in select patients. I think first we start by considering who needs a PCNL. Traditionally, we would say greater than 20 millimeters, I think, as our techniques have improved. I've dropped that value down to 15 millimeters. So greater than 15 millimeters is the patient who we should consider for PCNL. Smaller than 15 millimeters, as long as the Hounsfield units, the skin to stone distance, and the location is favorable, I think shockwave is really the primary modality of choice. Ureteroscopy, you see, falls in the middle. I wouldn't necessarily consider it the treatment of choice for either stones, but rather in specific situations, in patients who are obese, in patients who are anticoagulated, in patients where perhaps the stone is hard. Those would be situations where I might re resort to ureteroscopy for smaller stones, or I might resort to ureteroscopy for larger stones. So now that we've set the stage that we're looking at 15 millimeter stones, we also consider stones that are smaller. If anatomical variables are playing in a role, such as infundibular stenosis, a KLCL tick, a horseshoe, pelvic kidney, UPJ obstruction, these are all situations where if you try to get to the stone ureteroscopically, you might not get to it because there's something blocking your way. And if that fragment breaks up after shockwave and it's trying to get out, it might not be able to get out because we have a point where the anatomy is challenging for the stone to pass. So these would be situations where perhaps we might try a PCNL for a smaller stone, smaller than 15 millimeters. Now we know that PCNL has the highest success rate and you might ask the question, well, why not treat every stone with PCNL and we might get there one day as scopes get smaller. This study would say, yes, maybe we should be treating everyone with PCNL. This goes back to that WISQUAL questionnaire I mentioned. In this circle here, the larger the circle, the better the quality of life. We see that the circle is largest for PCNL compared to ureteroscopy and shockwave. So this is looking at what is the quality of life within three months after having your procedure, and the PCNL is best compared to shockwave and ureteroscopy, specifically in terms of emotional domains and the ability to focus on work, family, and personal interests. So PCNL actually has the best quality of life in the, during the first three months compared to the other procedures that we perform. But we don't consider it in everyone because patients die and that's not a good thing. Four of a thousand patients will die after PCNL primarily because of septic complications. So we'll come back to that risk of infection and the real risk of PCNL death in a few minutes when we talk about why going smaller may not be a good idea. Now looking at this, you think smaller size, less damage, it makes sense. We should just try a mini PCNL. And indeed, that was how Dr. Jackman felt in 1998, and that's how I felt when I was here in San Diego back in the late 90s. Steve Olgavy was one of our interventional radiology attendings who helped us develop a mini PCNL using a ureteral balloon and a small sheath. While we were excited about that, in parallel, Kadedu and Traxer and uh, Peggy Pearl were doing an animal study in Dallas. And they reported that the amount of scar and the amount of parenchymal loss was the same, whether you used an 11 French sheath or a 30 French sheath. So this study essentially put an end to the enthusiasm for mini PCNL in the United States because it suggested that there really wasn't any advantage in going smaller. Innovation continued to occur across the world, a lot of it occurring in India with Dr. Mahesh Desai. But we see a relatively small stone, a 12 millimeter stone, an 11 millimeter stone. Indeed, in his series, the average stone size was 13 millimeters and 11 millimeters. And reflect back to our first algorithm, who do we want to do a PCNL on? Is that stone bigger than 15 millimeters? So the question is, is the mini PCNL really appropriate for a larger stone? We worry about intrarenal pressures. A smaller sheath means that the pressures are going to be higher. And we know from dating back in 1927 that when the pressures are over 25 millimeters of mercury, we start to see pylovenous, pylosinus, uh, pylolymphatic backflow with significant black flow occurring over 30 millimeters of mercury. The question is, does the sheath size impact the risk of this? And the answer is yes. 
When one compares a 30 French PCNL to a micro PCNL, the pressures are higher at all stages of the procedure. When we look at the impact of sheath size going from 18 to 16 to 14, we see that the intrarenal pressures go from 11 to 16 to 25. When we look at how this relates to postoperative fever, patients who had a fever over 38.5 were more likely to have a uh, mean renal, intrarenal pressure greater than 20, and they were more likely to have a prolonged time above 30 millimeters of mercury. In this study, we took an animal model, we instilled E. coli into the renal pelvis, and then we compared pressures and did histologic examination of the tissue after a simulation of PCNL. We found bacteria in the kidney, we expected that because we instilled the E. coli, but what we didn't expect to find in the mini PCNL arm was bacteria in the spleen, the liver, and the blood. So this might explain why we see systemic inflammatory response syndrome after PCNL, and it also raises the red flag about the risk of septic complications if you use a mini PCNL approach. Well, what about outcomes? In this meta-analysis from Italy, we see that stone-free rates are lower in the mini PCNL group compared to the standard PCNL, and the OR time is longer. So why have a parenthesis of, well, maybe? It's this item here. There does appear to be a decrease in bleeding and a decrease in the risk for blood transfusions. So we're currently engaged in a multicenter randomized clinical trial comparing mini PERC to standard PERC run by Dr. Beaches here in San Diego to try to delineate really the value of mini PCNL, but also the risk. Another reason why there's a maybe is this study from Case Western. They reported that when they looked at the CT scans pre-op and one month later and used this free software, 3D Slicer, to do precise surface area and volumetric measurements, they reported that they saw a 21% decrease in renal volume after a PCNL. And they reported that this was more pronounced in patients who had had multiple PCNLs or a history of PCNL. So this raises the question, do we need to reevaluate the impact of our interventions on overall renal function one year out. And it could be that if we were to repeat the study looking at a mini PCNL group, perhaps the volume loss would be less. So for now, I typically stick with the 30 French sheath. On the rare occasion in those anatomical situations where we're doing it for a calocele tick or infundibular stenosis and we have a smaller stone burden, it would be in those situations where we might use a smaller sheath. Thank you.